Alright guys, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be telling you about the best hunter leveling pets in classic Wood Warcraft. And uh, our next video will actually cover the best raiding pets since I didn't expect this video to get so long. Most of you are probably jumping into this video thinking, you know, just go for a cat, go for a raptor or a boar when you're leveling up, and then just use a wolf when you're raiding and that's it, job done. But the thing is, Things are a little bit more complicated than that, it depends on the accessibility of each pet, first of all, which depends on your starting race and your levelling routes, and you don't want to take ages travelling just to get a pet that is slightly better. It also depends on what abilities are actually available to you, for example, to rank up the boar's abilities you need to tame certain animals, which can only be found in alliance areas, which means if you use a boar as a horde player, it's going to suck because it will only have lower rank abilities, which will massively reduce your damage of well, the damage of the pet. So I'm going to explain everything in this video. You know, I used to play Hunter a lot during the days of Nostalrius back in the golden days when I could stream private servers without getting my wrists slapped. Which reminds me, guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch because when the game comes out, I will be streaming a lot over on Twitch. So this video will be split into a number of sections. First of all, I will give you an analysis of all the viable pet options and the pros and cons of each. I will give you a taming path for each race in the game, including the perfect starting pet for each race, and you know when you need to replace your pet, etc. Then I will go through an ability taming path, right? It's important to keep the spell ranks of your pet abilities ranked up, and you can only do that by taming new pets, but we'll talk more about that later. So let's talk about your best options. The best option entirely depends on your starting race and primarily actually a starting faction because like I said you don't want to go into huge detail just to get you know tame a pet that's slightly better. There are a number of things to bear in mind when choosing a pet. One, enemy kill time. Two, sustainability. And three, something I'm calling intercept time, which is the time it takes for your pet to get into combat to actually get up to the mob in the first place. There are three intercept abilities available for your pets, that is Charge, Dash and Dive. All pets that don't have these abilities are essentially unviable. Pets also have a passive speed stat, so that's not another important thing to bear in mind. So guys, if you think about it, if a slow pet has to take a few seconds to get to the target, then you're wasting a couple of seconds each mob pool compared to a pet that can just charge in, charge in quickly. This means a couple of seconds wasted every single mob pool, which means every 30 kills, that's a minute. Right, and over the course of your leveling journey, that can easily turn into hours wasted just because your pet takes ages to get to the target, and it just takes a while for you actually to engage in combat in the first place. So anyway, let's go for the options. First, we have the boar, which has the fastest intercept time with its charge ability. Charge also boosts the attack power of the first melee hit of the boar, which means it's good for getting aggro. You can also learn dash, which is another ability that gets the boar into combat faster. Some people argue that the boar is best because it gets into combat the fastest, it's tanky so it requires less healing, and since it gets more aggro in that you know, first hit, the hunter himself can do a little bit more damage without gaining aggro. But the downside of the boar is that it has a 10% damage debuff. There's also the convenience that he is happy to pretty much eat anything. Secondly we have the cat. Cats have dash, which means their intercept time is quite fast as well, and only marginally slower than the balls. They're uh, not balls, Christ, balls. They have a 10% damage buff, which actually means they do 20% more damage than a boar, because boars have a 10% damage debuff. The cat is also much better at focus dumping, since it has two damage abilities, bite and claw, whereas the boar only has bite. That basically means that the cat does even more damage, and that continues to scale as you spec deeper into the beast mastery tree. Prowl also has a similar effect to charge, but you should only really use it if you're already close to an enemy, since Prowl does reduce the movement speed of your pet, which again will reduce your intercept time. So the short answer to this question is that the boar is better until the cat has access to the dash ability. Dash can be learned at level 32 from a stranglethorn tiger, so I'd recommend going for a boar until level 32, then you swap it with a cat. However, this does depend on what race you're playing because if you play Horde, like we said before, we can't really make the boar good at dealing damage because we can't rank up his abilities, whereas the Alliance can. But we'll talk more about that later when I go through every single race individually. I'm going to briefly talk about owls before we move on. The issue with owls is that you have to wait until level 16 to get Screech from the Flesh Ripper in Westfall, so when you can easily get a bit higher DPS option before them. But I know, and I know for a fact that some leveling routes for the Night Elf completely avoid Westfall, so there's that. And um, you also have to wait until about level 31 to get the dive ability for the Owl. 
So that means its intercept time is going to be really bad until level 31. So this means, you know, obviously as a horde as well, you can't even get an owl until about level 48 because you can't go into Teldrassil. Plus, as a dwarf, you know, it's quite a detour, but technically the owl has, you know, when it has dive and screech available, maxed, max ranked, is actually just as competitive as the other options. So, you know, it's up to you, but you will have to reset your training points and wait for the loyalty level to increase again at level 48. At that point, I probably wouldn't do it because it's just going to be a bit of a time waste. But anyway, let's get on with the pet taming route. I'll give you the order of pets that you should tame for each race as you level up to level 60. And then I'll finish with a list of abilities that need to be regularly upgraded for each pet. So first of all, we've got the Night Owl. First of all, I would get a Web Wood... I can't pronounce this, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Web Wood Silk Spinner to get Bite Rank 2. And then get a Strigid Hunter to get Claw Rank 2. Right, well these two, these two pets are quite close together, so you're really just taming them to get the ability. If you want to get the ability, basically you have to tame the pet, and then spam that pet ability, and then eventually it should be learned, well, taught to your character. Then finally, you want to get an Elder Knight Saber and teach these abilities to the Knight Saber and keep this guy into about level 18-ish. The Elder Knight Saber has really nice, fast attack speed. So, and then when you go to Lock Modan about level 18, you want to swap him for an Elder Mountain Boar. And again, so you, then you'll have Charge, you'll have Bite Rank 2, which would be really nice. And then at level 32, you want to swap him for a Stranglethorn Tiger, like we said before. For the Dwarf, you should first tame any boar, pretty much, that you can find. And then when you go into Lock Modan, what you want to do is tame a Forest Lurker, which is a spider, get bank Bite Rank 2, then quickly tame a Mountain Boar, or, you know, you can keep the first boar, to be honest, you know, it's entirely up to you. The, f the point is that what, what we want to do is we want to give the boar the, the higher rank bite spell, because, to, well, or any rank bite spell, because the boar doesn't actually get bite on his own, he doesn't learn it. So you have to look, quickly tame another pet to basically get bite for your, for your boar. So, and, and again, like, you're not restricted to, when, when I say get the Stranglethorn Tiger, you're not actually restricted to keeping that Stranglethorn Tiger, you can get a different pet if you wanted to. The point is, we just want that dash ability. You may want to get a Panther straight after you've tamed a Stranglethorn Tiger, so you can get Prowl as well. So, or you, or you just might prefer the look at the Panther, but the point is, you need to get that dash ability. Now let's go through the ore control options. First of all, you should tame the Encrusted Surf Crawler to get the Claw Rank 2 quickly. Then you will go for a Savannah Huntress at level 11, but don't forget to get rank 2 bite from the Oasis Snapjaw in the Barrens as well. I mean, you're just going to keep the, this cat until you swap him with a Stranglethorn Tiger at level 32. For the Tauren, things are a little bit more interesting. First of all, train a Prairie Wolf Alpha to get bike, bite rank 2, and then keep this pet for the time being. When you go and get a quest, um, you know, when you go into the Barrens, you leave more go, you're going to go over to the Barrens, and then eventually probably going to go to the Ratchet, okay? And when you're getting close to the Ratchet, what you want to do is you want to jump over the river and tame a Scorpid to get rank, claw rank 2, which is actually Endurator, but you know, then you're going to jump back over the, the river, and then you pretty much do the same as Troll and Orcs, you know, you get a Savannah Huntress with, at level 11, with, and then you give the Savannah Huntress a rank 2 bite and claw, and then you, and then you swap it at level 32 with a Stranglethorn Tiger. Because in vanilla your pets won't have all the abilities automatically when you tame them, and they won't automatically level up as you level up as well, you will need to go out into the world, tame new pets, and then to gain those new spell ranks. You basically have to go into combat with that pet, use the ability a few times, and then the char your character will automatically learn it. And then you can pass that ability, it basically appears in your training window, and you can pass the ability onto new pets. So, boars and cats need certain abilities regularly leveled up. I'm going to give you a quick taming path now to keep these abilities leveled up. It might be the case that when you're taming a pet, a new, well, you know, to gain a new ability, that it would be actually be more convenient for you to just replace that pet with a new pet. However, it is important to note that it does take a while for your loyalty level to go back up, and as you gain lo more loyalty levels, you gain more training points. It's actually lo loyalty level times the level, which is what the equation is, but I'll talk more, more, more about it in a, more, you know, in a different kind of guide. So you may not be able to give the pet its abilities, the new abilities that you have, because you've replaced the pet. And sometimes it's just better to go back to your old pet, because you've stacked up training points on it. But anyway, and uh, let's, uh, pre I'm pretty much just going to move on from there. So the options on this list are basically the lowest level that you can tame the pet, so it's the fastest way that you can get the pet ability to then pass on to your your current pet. It seems like the Alliance have better luck, really, uh, with earlier options than the Horde. And sometimes, 
they just generally have loads more options. But anyway, let's go on with the bike path. So rank three, you want to go for the Wood Lurker at level 17 in Loch Modan, or the Ghost Paw Runner in level 19 in Ashenvale, or the Deep Moss Crawler in Stone Talon Mountains. Rank four, you want to go for the Black Ravager at level 24 in Duskwood. You've also got the Giant Wetlands Crocolisk at level 25 in the Wetlands. And then you've got an Elder Moss Creeper in at level 26 in the Hillsbrad Foothills, so that's the Horde option. Rank 5, you've got Plains Creeper and the Arafi Highlands. Rank 6, you've got the Longtooth Runner um, at level 40, that's in Fellwood. You can also get Dash while you're at it, so that kills two birds with two stones. Rank 7, you want to go for the Saltwater Snapjaw, level 49 in the Hinterlands. And then rank 8, which is pretty much when you're at endgame, you're going to go for the Blood Axe Warg in Black Rock Spire. So now let's go for the Claw Path. At rank 3, you want the Shore Crawler, at level 16 in Westfall. You've also got the Black Bear Patriarch at level 16 in Loch Modan. You've also got the Grey Bear at Hillsbrad Foothills, which is about level 20. So rank 4, you've got the Elder Ashenvale Bear which is level 25 in Ashenvale, obviously. Rank 5, you've got the Scorpashi Lasher, which is level 34 in the Desolus zone. Rank 6, you've got a Scorpid Hunter at level 40 in Tenaris. Um, and then rank 7, you've got the Iron Fur Patriarch at level 48 in Feralus. And then rank 8, you've got the Elder Shardtooth, which is level 57 in Winterspring. So let's go through the Dash, dash Path. It's nice and short and sweet. You go for the Court Curzon War Tiger or the Elder Stranglethorn Tiger, like I already mentioned, to get the rank 1 of Dash. And then you can go for Ridge Stalker Patriarch at level 40 in the Badlands to get the rank 2. Then rank 3, you can go for Vile Branch Raiding Wolf, which is an elite wolf in the Hinterlands. Another way you can do that is just to get the Wargs from Blackrock Spire, but it will probably have to be about level 60. So now let's go for the Charge Path. Obviously, this path is cut off halfway through because you're going to be replacing the boar at level 32. So for rank 2 you want to go for the Mangy Mountain Boar in Loch Modan. Um, that's how you get rank 2. You've also got the Young Gore Tusk in Westfall which is actually sooner at level 12. A rank 3 is a difficult one because you can only get it from Belly Grub which is a quest boss in uh, the Red Ridge Mountains and people are probably going to be extremely irritated with you if you tame it to be honest a load of people will be farming this in groups as well and at the server launch so that is the, pretty much the only option the, well the other option after that is to go for the raging agamars which are like level 25 elites in rfk so you'll have to do a dungeon run to get your rank free charge you could just skip it to be honest it you know it's not essential because you're going to be getting a new pet level 32 anyway it's interesting to note here that rank 4 doesn't actually exist. Rank 4 for charge doesn't exist, it just goes straight to level f rank 5. Um, and I think that's because there's just a serious lack of boars in this level range. You may have come across a video quite recently from, I think it was Classic Winds, who's made this uh, gimmicky fun video about how what could you possibly level 1 to 60 just by killing boars. And in this level range, yeah, it's, there is like a serious lack of boars, so you don't actually get a rank 4 charge, interestingly. But anyway, that's where I'm going to end the video. Uh, my name is Amanda Goblin, until my next video, ciao.